Good morning and welcome to day 32 of 40 of our Lenten journey. Come and see. Today is Thursday, March 25th. And we've been in the book of Revelation and we're going to continue there today, almost to the end of it actually. And we're going to take a look at Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 and 17. I invite you to turn there now that we can read this together. Revelation 22, verses 16 and 17. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. The word of the Lord. Prior to these two particular sections of scripture in Revelation, basically, the doctrines of the church have been summarized. Uh, the doctrine of the church, the gospel, creation, revelation, and last things. And we're almost at the end of this book, and it's kind of like this triumphant moment is beginning to take place. It kind of makes you think of a, of a composer of music or a, a orchestra leader as they begin to come to the climax of the symphony they've been playing and everything is going to crash forth upon the scene. I can't even imagine what that will look like, that moment in time. And now in this final section, all the revealed truth of God is crystallized in these two verses. David Israel's greatest king stands for the glory of the whole Israelite economy. But that's nothing compared to Jesus Christ. He is so much more. He is not only great David's greater son, but he is Lord and king of this new Israel. He is also David's Lord. He is the prophet Isaiah's everlasting father. Before Abraham was, he is. Indeed, he was before all things. We have learned that so clearly. He is, in two words, both the root and the offspring of David. Both his ancestor and his descendant. There is nothing from beginning to end that Jesus is not. And it's expressed because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. All of history is tied up in Jesus Christ. Jesus declares here one of the great I am statements. Basically, it is I am Jesus, the bright morning star. He heralds the dawn of eternity for you and for me. And Jesus is telling us that this life is only the prelude to the real life of the world to come. This life we have here and now empowered by the Holy Spirit. And he's sending his angel with this testimony to the church. And in so doing, he's just showing us his love, his power, his wisdom, all that God desires that you and I will have and will walk in here and now as his creatures, as, as his beloved. For we are indeed the beloved of God, the bride of Christ. And this divine truth that Jesus is presenting embraces all of time, all of eternity, 
It cannot be changed. Jesus is offering this invitation, this final invitation of scripture. Come. This simple word, come, is an invitation to the person who is hearing these words. That's you. That's me right now. Come. It's an invitation to those who read these words. It is an invitation to the church. And it's more than that. It's a prayer. We are praying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Return for your bride. You know, it's strange perhaps to be thinking about these things in the midst of Lent. But it's just where the Holy Spirit wants us to go. The Holy Spirit is asking, do we want more of Jesus? Do we want to more fully embrace the joys of salvation that are ours in Jesus Christ? We are reminded of how Jesus offered this water of eternal life to the Samaritan woman. Eternity was hers. All she had to do was respond to Jesus. This invitation that's taking place right now by Jesus, this come, this is the opportunity for those who hear to share as well. It's actually a command in the Greek language asking us to share this invitation with those who are thirsty, those who are lost, those who still need to know Jesus. The good news is completely unlimited. It's open to all and embraces all. Jesus is asking us to invite others to come and drink the water of life. Salvation cannot be earned. It is the free gift of God to everyone who receives it. We have learned about that. I believe that you and I live in a world that is desperately thirsty for living water. And I believe that many are dying of thirst. But for you and for me, it's, it's not too late. You and I have the opportunity to invite everyone we come across in every possibility where God opens the door to us. We're able to invite them to come and have a drink. We can ask, are you thirsty? We know what will quench that thirst. All you who are thirsty, come. All oh, who are thirsty, all oh, who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy. His deep cries out. Away in the way 
waves of his mercy as he cries out to thee come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come he cries out Cries out to deep. As deep cries out to deep. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and quench our thirst. Grant us more of you for the mission and ministry of the journey we are currently in. I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus says, it is done in Revelation 21.6. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. You and I, as bearers of this truth, this light, this word, are given the opportunity for invitation in a powerful way to join Jesus, to be the one to invite others to have their thirst quenched. And the beauty is we do it by the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own strength. Today, if you need more of God, more of the Holy Spirit, ask for it. Ask for that outpouring, for God to empower you for the ministry that we have ahead of us. My hope and prayer is for an abundant harvest, that God will open the door as we invite, many will come in. God be praised. Come and journey.